Now, a lot of things come over from the Orient. A lot of things come over from the Orient. And some things have a big impact on us, and some things don't. I can't think of anything that come over from the Orient that actually had a big impact or a phenomenon type craze other than Godzilla. But there is something new that's come over to the United States and has actually captured the minds and the imagination of every single child. And you know what? It's not new at all. Japanese kids have been watching this thing since 1995. It started out as a cartoon, went to a comic book, they made it into a video game, went to toys, collectible card game. Now, praise God, there's even a, a movie on it. And it was started in 1995. It's not new, but it's new to kids, and they're eating it up. And it's called Pokemon. And it stands for Pocket Monster. And it even made the cover of Time Magazine. Now, the first thing I want you to notice is, do you notice any symbol up there that you've seen before? The spiral. And it stands for what? Male fertility. Okay? Now, this thing is actually called Polyworld, but they actually had another name for it before they renamed it. When this creature first came out, it was called Hypno. And they changed it to Polyworld to make it a little more innocent. But you see what it actually does is it's supposed to be able to mesmerize and hypnotize its enemies. And you can see how that would happen. That starts spinning around and it's just like one of those hypn hypnotic wheels that, that they use to hypnotize. And you see up here in the top, here's a creature, an alligator type creature over here, a dragon. Kind of a funny duck build thing down here. And this is an interesting character over here. This character over here is called Mewtwo. And Mewtwo looks like an alien. If you look at him real carefully, he looks like an alien. But you know, the first thing that I noticed about that thing is, when I looked at it, and I looked at those eyes, I said, you know what? That kind of looks like the things that we used to pray to inside that circle. Now you notice that he has a particular salute that he's given. And he's in this pose. Every time that you see Mewtwo, he's in this pose. Now he has three fingers. And those three fingers are always sticking out like that. Now he doesn't have five fingers like we do. He has three. But if they were the three on us, they'd be this. And that doesn't mean hook them horns. Doesn't mean I love you. Doesn't mean one more. It means hail Satan. It's the satanic salute that all Satanists identify themselves with. And it says here, you look here, it says for many kids, it's now an addiction. <laughs> Very much so. Cards, video games, toys, a new movie. Is it bad for them? What we need to look at is whether or not that particular statement holds true. Is it bad for them? Here's one of the characters. Cute little one. Everybody, okay, everybody go, oh, come on. I know, I know you wanted to do that, see? That's why I did that. He's cute. But the one thing I noticed about him right off, this is Pikachu. One thing I noticed about him right off was his tail. It's a lightning bolt. And it's a satanic Z. It even comes down here to a point. Now, just by looking at him enough alone is not enough to really be able to say, okay, yeah, that's bad or that's satanic. What we first need to do is we need to look at the actual production of these things. And the first thing we need to do is we need to look at who actually produced the trading card game that has captured the minds and the imaginations of our children. Now, it doesn't make any difference what I say, it's what their own material says, because their own material will give them away. Okay? So I'm going to read to you, here's the direct quote from the, the web pages of the producer of this game. Listen to this. The Pokemon trading card game is a new collectible card game that is made and distributed by Wizards of the Coast. What is a wizard? Male practitioner of black magic. Wizards of the Coast, the same company that made the best-selling game Magic the Gathering. Magic the Gathering is a heavily occult-laced trading card game which has been very popular in the 90s. And I should also tell you that 
Widgets of the Coast also owns a subsidiary company named TSR, and TSR is the company that puts out all Dungeons and Dragons material. So let's look at Magic the Gathering, because this is the same company that puts out Pokemon. So let's see where they're coming from. Now, from seeing the symbols, your, your actual discernment should now begin to be sharpened. How many see a circle? How many see a pentagram? Yeah. If you look, there it is. See that? Magic the Gathering. This is a role-playing game. Now, parents, in case you don't know what that is, that means that your child actually becomes a character in the game actually becomes a part of the game. And that's what makes it exciting is there's not many games out there that they can actually become a part of. They can play it, but they don't actually become a part of it. In this particular game, they actually do become a character in the game. And remember it said that it's an occult game. One of the dangers of this thing is being a role-playing game is that it's played with the mind. How many know that the mind is a very fragile thing? And what happens is, in these role-playing games, I'm going to use the example of Dungeons & Dragons because TSR is the one that puts out all their material. The danger of dragons, Dungeons & Dragons or any kind of role-playing game like this is that it's played with the mind, and when played with the mind, the mind begins to lose that fine line with what's real and what's fantasy. And the more you get into the fantasy world, the more it seems real, and all of a sudden now you don't know what's real and what's not. In Dungeons and Dragons, this is a game played by three or four people. And what you do is you have one particular person that's the dungeon master, and he sets all the rules up for this thing. And then in your mind, you actually fight battles. You go through mazes, you go through dungeons, and you actually fight wars with evil wizards, dragons, demons, powerful satanic beings. It's all in the mind. And I mean, if you've got a vivid imagination, you can have one heck of a game. And what happens is, is that you can play this game for 10 to 12 years. Because the object is, as long as your character is alive, you're in the game. Once your character dies or gets killed in that particular game, you're out. So you can imagine that if a person loses touch with reality and now they've actually become that character, guess what? Anything that happens to that character now happens to them. And there's overwhelming evidence, psychiatrists and psychologists both tell us, there's overwhelming evidence showing that a lot of teenage suicides that are caused by Dungeons and Dragons are caused because the player has finally lost touch with reality. And what's happened to them now, they actually feel a psychic bond with that character and so the character gets killed off and no longer in the game you have no no purpose because all your purpose was for the last 10 to 12 years was playing Dungeons and Dragons so your character gets knocked off guess what so do you so let's go back to Magic the Gathering here's one of the cards yeah ain't he cute this is Cabal Ghoul now you notice that there's counters up here in other words this stands for two points and it says Cabal Ghoul. Now, if, in case you don't know what a ghoul is, it's a dead, rotting, decaying thing that's been in the ground and magically summoned back to life. So you have a walking, dead thing. And that's what a ghoul is. And in this particular thing, it says, at the end of each turn, put a one plus one counter on Cabal Ghoul for each other creature that died during the turn and was not regenerated. In other words, you have cards that will actually keep your character alive for a certain amount of time. Here's another interesting card. Because it's called the All Hallows Eve card. Again, this is all in magic. Magic the Gathering. By the way, there was a news clip that I read about two weeks ago that spoke of a young boy in Maine. I don't remember what the town was, but it was in Maine. 
And he came home one day and asked his mother about Magic the Gathering and said that the teacher had decided to use Magic the Gathering, this card game, as a new and exciting way to teach mathematics in, in school, in their class. And they even formed what was called a magic club, and that all the kids were part of this magic club. Well, the mother said, well, you're not going to become a part of that. You're not going to be in that. But one of the kids had given him one of the cards, and that card he showed to his mother, and that card was called Necromancer. And on that card, it showed spiritual beings actually being risen up out of the ground, out of their grave. And then he asked his mother, what does summon mean? And she said, why do you ask that? And she said, he told her, he said, because all the kids on recess go outside on the school grounds, pick up huge sticks, wave them in the air, and say, spirits, enter me. True. This is all Hallow's Eve. Again, two points symbolized by two skulls. Here's your demonic black cat. I guess it's a black cat. I've never seen anything look like that. There's your demon in the middle, jack-o'-lantern, full moon, and it says this card is called sorcery. Sorcery comes from the Greek word pharmakeia. It's where we get the word pharmaceutical. In occultism, it's witchcraft through drugs, sorcery. And it says put two counters on this card, remove a counter during your upkeep, and when you remove the last counter from All Hallows Eve, all players take all creatures from their graveyards and put them directly into play. Treat these creatures as though they were just summoned. You choose what order they come into play. Remember that again, this is a role-playing game. This is called the magician. I wonder why. Here you see the man kneeling and look, he's forming with his hands the triangle. Right there. And he's kneeling in front of a flame. There are the crescent moons behind him. Over here can only be demons hellfire all around here it's called the magician and these are collectible cards and these are cards that one day your child may come home with or may know of a student that has given him some of these cards now you will know what they are so let's go back to Pokemon because now we've, we've, we've already established that the same company that puts out that game and puts out Dungeons and Dragons, puts out cute little Pokemon. Isn't that interesting? Now, before we go any further, I want to see that if we as a group can agree on something. So I need a little audience participation here to say yes or no. Okay? We are, are you into that? Yeah. Okay. Listen to me carefully. If we examine the characters of this particular program, and they are the kind of role models that we want our kids to be watching. In other words, if, if this whole game, the characters of this game, the monsters, this whole premise of this thing actually goes to establish the kind of values, the kind of standards, and the kind of morals that we want our kids to have when they reach adulthood, that it's okay. In other words, if they actually help to establish the kind of morals, values, and standards that we want our children or our grandchildren to have when they get to be an adult, that it must be all right. Can we agree on that? Yes. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to examine and see what kind of role models we have in this game. Now, what we need to do then, everybody go, oh, again. Oh, I know. He's cute, isn't he? Little satanic tail. Up here is the Pokemon ball. Okay. That's this thing here. Okay, and inside of that, you catch the Pokemon. Let the camera get a view of that. That's the Pokemon ball, and you actually catch the monster inside of that thing and harness the power in there. And then you can call on that power to regenerate itself outside of that ball. And praise God, it turns into a bigger and better monster. <laughs> Now, we're told that there are 150 species of these particular creatures on the face of the earth. And we're also told in the material that these pocket monsters are creatures that inhabit the world with humans. And that they can evolve and grow in bigger and better creatures. Now, the object of this game is got to catch them all. And they tell you that if you catch them all, you become a Pokemon master. Listen, parents, 
that word master will appeal to any child because they can become a somebody. They can become a master. And you know what? If you're the master of something, you don't need mom, you don't need dad, you don't need grandparents, you don't need aunts and uncles, you don't need school, and you probably don't even need a church because you're a master. You can become a god. That's the premise of what this has been teaching. You become the Pokemon master. That's the whole premise and the whole goal of this game. Now, this is the main character right here. He's called Ash Ketchum. Not Hal Ketchum, but Ash Ketchum. Okay? And I'm, again, it doesn't make any difference what I say. It's what their own material says. I'm going to tell you what, what they describe him as. Listen to this. An energetic and determined 10-year-old who's a little too competitive, and he's obsessed with catching all Pokemon and driven to become the world's foremost Pokemon master. And, you know, every time that your children watch this program, whether it's a video, whether it's a cartoon, whether it's a comic book, no matter what it is, they hear this mantra, this rap song that's played over again. And it says, I will travel across the land searching far and wide each Pokemon to understand the power that's inside. And then it's enchanted to them. Gotta catch them all over and over and over and over again. You know what it does? It fuels your child's craving for more cards, more books, more videos, more movies. It's designed to do that. That's what we call enchanting. Here's the next character. This is Misty. Look at this. Now this is off of a comic book. This is actually a page of a comic book. But if this was clear, if this was actually clear, you'd see that that's a halter top. It stops right there. And she's got short shorts on. And you know she's got to be about the same age as what Ash is. Okay? And she's described as Ash's companion. And listen to what it says about her. She's headstrong and stubborn, constantly arguing with Ash. Typical woman. No, just, just kidding. <laughs> God forgive me. All right. <laughs> Frivolous spirit. That's what it was. And here's Brock over here in the corner. And Brock is by far the most hormonal because his fascination with the opposite sex many times gets him or the group in trouble. Well, then there's Pokemon trainer Gary. And Gary's not pictured in here, but Gary is a real self-centered jerk. He's vindictive and he's obnoxious. And then there are two characters, and one's called Jesse, and the other one's called James. And listen to what it says about them. It says, prepare for trouble, make it double. Jesse and James are an evil gang looking to steal rare Pokemon. Jesse and James are stuck up, fashion conscious, and you know what? In the program... They're also prone to cross-dressing. Now, if you don't know what that means, that means that if you feel like you're a woman in a man's body, you wear women's clothing. You dress like one. If you're a woman who feels manly, you wear men's underclothing and dress like one. Cross-dressing. Oh, what kind of role model would that be? Okay, now remember at the first, I think that's enough right here, because I think we've got a pretty well good establishment on this thing. Remember that I said that if the characters were the kind of role models that established the kind of values, standards, and morals that we wanted our kids to have when they got to be an adult, that this game or this particular thing is okay. Remember we said that? Okay, so let's examine what we got. Let's see. Uh, headstrong, stubborn, quibbling, self-centered, vindictive, obnoxious, hormonal, sexually preoccupied, evil, thieving, cross-dressing jerks. No. I don't know about you, but I mean, even if I wasn't a Christian parent, I wouldn't want my kids to grow up with those kind of traits. Then we have to actually say that the characters of this game don't biblically stand up, do they? In other words, they don't represent the kind of values and standards we want our kids to have. And they're definitely not the role models we want our kids to be. But these are the characters that our children are identifying with day after day after day playing this game, watching the cartoon, reading the books, looking at the videos. Now we're also told that these actual beings have supernatural abilities. 
In other words, they can evolve and grow into bigger and better monsters. Now, this is a scene, actually this is a poster from the movie. And look here, this is Mew, this is Mew over here, M-E-U, he's kind of cute. And this is Mewtwo over here, complete with his satanic salute. And if you notice, that pose is always given with the left hand. That's significant. Remember the left hand path? And we're told that they get bigger and better. Of course, that's what we always want. Bigger and better monsters, that's what the world needs. And we're told that they get bigger and better through the use of energy. Now, a funny thing happened, well it actually wasn't funny, but an interesting thing happened when this movie, the Pokemon, was actually first released in Japan. I want you to see it. This is from CNN. Look at this. Because this is very highly unusual. Japanese cartoon triggers seizures in hundreds of children. And look at this. This is Tokyo, December 17, 1997. This is when the movie was first actually released over in Japan. The bright flashing lights of a popular TV cartoon became a serious matter Tuesday evening when they triggered seizures in hundreds of Japanese children. In a national survey, the Tokyo Fire Department found that at least 618 children had suffered convulsions, vomiting, irritated eyes, and other symptoms after watching Pokemon. Japanese television network NHK reported that 111 people were still hospitalized Wednesday morning. And now spokesman Hiroshi Uramoto said that a later broadcast of the show scheduled for 30 other stations nationwide had been canceled and that an investigation was well underway. We are shocked to hear many children were taken to hospitals, Uramoto said. We will investigate thoroughly and consult with experts. And you know what they found? Not one of those children had a history of epilepsy. Now, you know, working in the mental health field for as long as I did, I can tell you that bright flashing lights will trigger off in several, uh, in occasion, seizures and convulsions in kids or even adults that are prone to be epileptic. But not in a hundred and so kids who have no seizure problem and no epileptic history. There's something unusual about that. And they went through, and it goes on further to say that they went through and even did CAT scans. And the whole premise was that at the end, they had to conclude that they don't know why it happened. Is that by coincidence? Or did something happen that they can't explain? Remember I said that they get their energy through energy balls. And here is a picture of little cute little Pikachu and he's being energized by an energy ball. And now you notice he's not quite so cute anymore and his little satanic tail is really erect. And now parents, if you're not up on Pokemon, you need to be. And one of the things you can do is go out and buy the official Pokemon trading card game player's guide. And you can get this at any store that sells any of the Pokemon stuff. I mean anything. Uh, you can get it like at uh, uh, Toys R Us or any of those places that sell any of the Pokemon. And it says on the back of this, catch them all, then build an un unbeatable tournament deck. And one of the things you can do is look through here because it shows every Pokemon in existence. And it tells you what their powers are. And it tells you how they get weak. And it tells you how they energize and what you need to energize them. But something very unusual is also in this book, and that is that they actually show the energy balls that, that is used to make these monsters bigger and better. I want you to see them. I hope you can see them from where, where I am. Um, I'm going to hold it out here so hopefully you can see it. Look at the yellow. What do you see? Lightning bolt. Lightning bolt. Look here, all-seeing eye. Everybody see that? Up here is the clenched fist, symbol for rebellion, anarchy. Right down here is a powerful witchcraft symbol, where my finger is. Powerful witchcraft symbol, and it's a symbol for fire. Down here is another powerful witchcraft symbol. 
actually a new age symbol they call a new age symbol for earth okay which is a green leaf and down at the bottom here this blue ball down in here is the symbol for energy of water and water transforms into wind earth wind and fire the three basic elements of all witchcraft parents and I'm gonna ask you parents grandparents concerned aunt and uncles friends do you think they put that in there by coincidence do you think they just built this game put these on there and said hey let's just put those symbols on there they look cool kids won't know what they are but they'll like them because they look cool or did they put them on there because they know what the meaning of each one of those symbols is and they want to desensitize our children to seeing those symbols so much that when they see them in other things hey no big deal there is a devised plan going on for the battle of our children's minds there's a war going on right now for the children because Satan wants them really bad who better to serve the Antichrist than the youth and the whole object is to catch them while they're young remember the old kid remember the the Pokemon motto gotta catch them all who do you think feels that way it's the enemy gotta catch them all gotta get them while they're young gotta induct satanic doctrine gotta put these symbols in their spirits gotta put these monsters in their heads gotta mess up their dreams gotta mess up their reality gotta break up the family have you ever tried to get it talking to a child when he's into this game it's impossible they spend more time on this Pokemon and you know what it's amazing that your child can tell you every Pokemon in existence even tell you where they get their power what they do and how they do it but they can't tell you what you told them five minutes ago they also can't tell you probably what they learned in school that day and even worse than that they can't quote you scripture there's something wrong and I'm talking to the men right now because you know man we've been given an awesome task by God we have nothing to say about it you know why God tells us that we're the priest of our homes yes. we are the ones who say we are going to follow God I don't care what anyone else does but as for me and my family we are going to serve the Lord yes. we are the ones who are supposed to say this stuff is going to be allowed and this stuff is out and ladies women of God you've got an awesome task ahead too because the Word of God says that you're to raise your children in the ways of the Lord not in the ways of these Pokemon not in the ways of witchcraft or Satan worship but in the ways of the Lord are we doing that or are we subtly giving in this is a picture from one of the comic books look at this Pokemon psychic surprise <laughs> surprise all right look at this this creature right here is called haunter and I talked to three kids in three different cities who actually came up and told me that they were having bad dreams and that creature was in their dreams called haunter that makes sense haunt right up here is a creature that's not quite so cute now this over here is not quite so cute little Pikachu down here he's crying his eyes out he's not cute and even Ash doesn't look cute anymore psychic surprise and you know going back to those energy balls I believe that those energy balls represent that the Pokemon get their power by supernatural occult ability you saw the symbols remember the material speak for itself they give themselves away and what made that even more evident was two cards one was called Abra and the other called is called is called Kadabra Abra Kadabra and that's an actual phrase it's an actual name listen to this Webster's dictionary defines it as a word supposed to have magic powers and hence used in incantations on amulets etc a magic spell or formula and on the Abra card it says using its ability to read minds it will identify impending danger and teleport the user to safety 
the Kadabra character has a pentagram on his forehead. And he has SSS across his chest. And it is the satanic SSS. And in my particular sect of Satanism, we didn't have it, but I ran into other groups that did. They had tattoos on the inside of their wrist, over their breasts, or on the inside of their thigh, and it was that same SSS. You know what it stands for? Satan's Solemn Servant. And also, the Cadabra character is always pictured on the card with his left hand giving the satanic salute. And again, I have to ask you, do you think that's on there by coincidence? Do you think they just made this game and said, hey, let's just throw that in there because it looks good? Let's just throw that in there because it makes it look a little more exciting. Or did they put that in there because they know exactly what it means and they want our children to get desensitized to it? They want our children to be able to look at that and actually at one day now, while they're identifying with their favorite Pokemon, reach up and go, hail Pokemon! And what are they actually hailing? Satan. Listen, our kids are carrying around these cards like they're magic symbols. And they are taught to believe that they can call on the powers of these cards anytime they want to. And I ask you, do you believe that our kids believe they have power? Or do you think that, they, that it's just, this is just nothing but talk? Because if they don't believe that it has power, why are we seeing time after time after time news clips about our kids beating each other up on school grounds even stabbing each other over Pokemon cards look at this Quebec teen stabbed at school over Pokemon cards this was in Montreal and this was a 12 year old student that tried to help his younger brother after his younger brother had his Pokemon card deck stolen from him and he went over to these young men to get the cards back, and one of the boys pulled out a four-inch knife and stabbed him with it. Look at this. Boy attacks teacher over Pokemon. Here in Lakeland, Florida, there was a young boy who had a, who had a deck of Pokemon cards, and he was passing them around the class, and the, the woman teacher noticed that they were paying more attention to Pokemon than they were her. So she waited for the deck to get back to this young man, and then she walked over and grabbed that deck out of his hand. He got up and struck her dead in the face with his fists. And he, of course, he got called in on the principal's uh, carpet on, in the office, and they called for the parents, and the parents came to pick him up. And you know what he told his father? They were trying to steal my powers. Our kids are taught to believe that these things actually have supernatural ability and that they can call on them anytime they want to because their material states that. In this book, it tells your child, you have the power at your fingertips, so use it. And that's what they're doing. This game is a war designed to attack our children's minds, their very character. And if it gets into our homes, it will wreck family life in one way, shape, or form. This stuff is nothing more than unadulterated witchcraft, and it's put in a child's form, designed to attack the child and the parents and the entire family that this thing is associated with. That's exactly what it's designed to do, and that's what it does. Pokemon is a step to bigger and better things in the occult. And I have to wonder sometime if when a, a, a grade school child is going to do what the Weeping Bell Razor Leaf Pokemon card says. It says this. It spits out poison powder to immobilize the enemy and then finishes the enemy with a spray of acid. And these cards cost anywhere from $7 to $9 per single pack. And there are report after report of children going into their parents' pocketbook and stealing money to go out and buy these cards. What is the purpose? What is the magic that's behind the whole game of Pokemon? I think by looking at it in that realm and looking at it the way that we've looked at it, I don't see it as being something that is beneficial to our children. I don't see it as being something that's going to help our family grow.
And I sure don't see it as something that's going to help get the child established in the ways of the Lord. This is totally the opposite. Remember that the whole goal in all of these role-playing games, and especially in Pokemon, is to become the master. Master. 